Hello, I'll just use this microphone. I don't know what happened to the other one, but how's that? Happy New Year! Hi, Nina. Hi, Christina. Okay, now if you can hear me, say, I don't know, give me an emoji smiley face or something, or give me some hearts or something, so I'll know. Actually, I don't know if the hearts work on here. Um, so, I think you can hear me now. You know, for a while it was like double sound, <laughs> and then it was no sound. Yay! Donna can hear me. Ah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Why is not wanting to, uh-oh. Hmm. Let's see if I can reconnect. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Robin. Yay! I'm glad y'all can hear me now. Thank you for letting me know. Let me see something real quick. If I can reconnect. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Hi, Vicki. Oh, I love having y'all here. I told you I love Monday mornings. Well, it feels like morning, but it's noon. Christina and Tanya Ann. Yay. I'm glad y'all are here. We have Dina. You have sound now too. Yay, Jackie. <laughs> Hi, Lori. It's sunny in Northern Colorado. Okay. I'm going to put up, I forgot to put up the, or I'm going to try to. If you want to get a text, a lot of people are remembering to come on because they're getting a text from me. And the text, I don't use it very often. I do use it for divas and doodles. And then I sent out a little Merry Christmas to everybody. Did I, I think I sent out a Happy New Year too. So if you want that, it's up at the top. And basically what you do, it's real simple. You just go to your phone and go to the text box and click in. Um, I'm moving it, see, I think, so you can see it a little bit better maybe. Um, Okay, so let me move this up. I think you can see it better if there's a lot behind it. So you go to your phone and you'll go to the number, like you're dialing a number, 81010, and then you'll put inside there so you so I can find you, basically, the at sign, create the number for him. You got the text? Yay, I, Allison. Yay. So anyway, a lot of people like the text reminder because... If you're like me, Monday morning, I'm just like, just trying to pull it together. <laughs> so there's that. Also, quick announcement, put down June 18th on your calendar if you're interested in joining my tribe, my lettering tribes, either one or both. And what they are is um, a membership group where I teach lettering. In fact, after this, we go in and do part two. So if you've seen like the finished product, we've done the color and all the things, that's where uh, we do that. And then also have guest artists come in. And I give out free printables, and it's a sweet community. Love my peoples. Create with Christ, which is appropriate since we're doing scripture. Yes, that's too funny. Okay, if you are in my tribe, go ahead and put your little light bulb or sunshine emoji. Or if you're in both, put both of them. But one is called Be the Light. We focus on being the light in both groups. Our whole purpose, the reason I started the groups is because... Um, that God connected me to, uh, he cre He created me to connect to women through creativity and faith. We have a few men. And um, by doing that, we uh, I, I encourage people to be the light. My word of the year last year was shine. And it was based off Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before others so they can see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's our whole goal. And then shine brought is the iPad lettering tribe. Same thing, same thing. So welcome, guys. If you're new here, say hello. Say hello. Some of you can't find the can't find the emoji, so just say I'm in the tribe or whatever if you want to. Look at y'all. Awesome. Okay, so y'all ready to get started this morning? If you are brand new, welcome, welcome. I'm Christy Darty. I teach hand lettering and doodling, and we do devos and doodles on Mondays at noon central. Set your calendar. I my I forgot to tell you, my membership groups are faith-based. I think you probably caught on to that. But hi, Mandy. Look at y'all. I don't know if I said hi, Darlene, but hi, Darlene and JJ and, and everybody that I've missed. It doesn't show me everybody on the screen. So you're all important, all important, equally as important. Um, I have to tell you all a, a quick story. I'm going to do a podcast on this, but over the holiday weekend, um, I was on TikTok and some of you have heard me talk about TikTok and TikTok is, it's, it can be a great platform, but also it can be like, mm, 
some stuff on there you would not want to hear or see. And so as I am learning this app, and I'm doing it for many purposes, one is growing my audience, but also for growing in, in my faith and then sharing my faith with other people. And what better way to do that is on a new platform with a whole new audience. So when, I, when I've been on there and I've been doing videos and all the things, and if you don't know, hi, hi, Troop, hi, Troop, Candace. If you don't know anything about TikTok, it's an app, just like Facebook's an app. But it's uh, a lot of dancing and singing, but also it has craft. A lot of uh, what I find intriguing are Christians on there that are just sharing the word and crafty stuff on there. So if you get on TikTok, just know when you first get on there, you're going to be pretty offended if you are like me. So it took me a little while. I was like, why am I on here? And then after a little while, by the way, I'm getting to my story. <laughs> after a little bit, the algorithm starts learning about you. And they're like, oh, she likes Christian stuff. I'm going to show her Christian stuff. Oh, she likes this. But in the meantime, you still see stuff and hear stuff that you wouldn't want to hear or see. So I just felt totally called to share something. And it was a, um, you can do something called like a duet or a stitch where somebody, like their TikTok, like this lady's was like, tell me the one thing that you can't stand about TikTok. And then you could finish the sentence. So I just, I was sitting waiting on the dentist. I was actually sitting in my car and I saw that TikTok and I was like, I really, I really want to respond to this because I, I can't handle the F-bombs. I can't handle, you know, all the cussing and stuff. And that's what you see, you hear a lot of. And um, so I just have to scroll real fast, but I'm also learning a lot about people. Like I can be in a little bubble and it's, in a way good for me to see that the whole world's not like my people like y'all you know what I'm saying hi Barb hi Dee Dee hi Rena good to see y'all and um so I did my TikTok and it was like it started off like okay because here's one thing that I'm very passionate about when I'm sharing something just like if I'm being if I'm sharing something that I'm trying to work on but other people might be struggling with I don't want them to feel judged that's between them and the Lord the Lord will convict them okay so I started off the TikTok with, it said, what do you not like about TikTok? So I was like, you know, I, um, I love other people on here and da, 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 da. And I kept beating around the bush and I finally was like, it's the language, it's the language. I don't like the language, but I was very cautious about how I said it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I didn't say, if you say the F bomb, you're going to hell. Cause what does that do? That's going to make someone who's a Christian be like, I don't, I mean, that's not a Christian be like, I don't ever want to be a Christian. Um, so I think that's the thing that I'm really working on this year. And, um, but what happened on that TikTok? Guess what happened? I don't remember how many people liked it, but 700 people have commented so far. Now I kind of get a little like after I posted that, I got a little like <gasps> tightening in my chest. Like, was that? Was that dumb? Should I not have done that? Am I going to get a lot of hate? Because there's a lot of hate too, you know, just like with any, anything you post your opinion on, people are going to come at you. Well, I just felt called to do it. I felt like the Lord wants me to do it. And I knew when I posted it that there could be negative feedback. So y'all, 700 comments, people who wrote words. If I could tell you how many that said me too, I, the majority, the majority I don't see any negative comments on there. It shocked me. I was like, okay, Lord, what is, what are you telling me? What does this mean? So I, um, prayed about it. And my word of the year is rise, like rise up, rise up and, and share. And my word last year was shine. So it's kind of like rise and shine. So I'm going to rise up, be bolder in my faith and shine to people so do it in a kind, loving way. And I think that's sometimes what we forget because we're so passionate about what we believe in. So that's you're going to hear me preach about that this whole year. That is my goal. I feel like we should rise up, be bold in our faith, but be sure to be kind and loving because you're going to turn people away. Let's see what y'all have to say here. Um, I, it cut off part of it, but the song they were playing at that word, I immediately unsubscribed then. Maybe they'll get the message. Cats and Christians and keto for me on TikTok. Yes, it is eye opening. Oh my gosh, Robin. Mm hmm. Exactly. Stuff falls out of my mouth every now and then. So we're convicted, right? 
I remember reading some of the comments. They were all me too. Oh, Vern! They were me too, me too, me too, y'all. And here's the thing. So much respect and love. What they said to me was, thank you for speaking out. Thank you for speaking out. And it also makes us all realize that we're not alone. Because you get on the app and you're like, honestly, people in the world talk like this? Honestly, there's music that says this? And I don't want to be the um, holier-than-thou person. That is not who I want to be. That's the last person I want to be, right? I have not done TikTok for the worldly aspect of it. I get it, Dawn. I get it. F works my nerves, but GD sets my hair on fire. And a lot of people said that, too. Oh, I'll rise up. I'm rising up to connect closer. And today, y'all, okay, so I I'll talk to y'all a little bit about, you know, thinking of your word of the year. And so in here, in this devotion, I was like, oh my gosh, this would be the best word. I already picked mine, but oh, some of y'all who haven't picked one, this might be the one you want to pick because I just kept being convicted over and over. And I'm like, he's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what it is. And I'll go ahead and share that with you. So let's get started. I'm going to start with prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you for this amazing group of women. Thank you for Mondays. Thank you for this opportunity, this platform for me to share my passion of spreading your word. Lord, thank you for uh, helping us um, be bold in our faith, but doing it in a kind and loving way. We don't want to turn people away from you. We want to show that you are a loving God and you accept anyone. That is how we want to come across too. Uh, Lord, I want to see people like like you, like you do, like you do. They are your children. And so today I come to you, Lord, and we t we're going to talk about perspective. And perspective is a big thing. How we interpret things, and Lord, we want to be, we want to, we want to interpret things the way that you would have us. So again, Lord, there's some people here today that are struggling, having a hard time, barely could make it maybe want to click off right now, but Lord, give them the strength and the faith to hang on and listen to what you have in store for them today. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay. I am also turning this into a podcast, so I'm not going to be answering many comments as we go, but y'all talk to each other, okay? Okay. Today is day 20. We are doing the devotional, Let Your Light Shine. It's a compilation from Jana Kennedy Spicer, and it's a devotional that we've been doing. Uh, my Devos and Doodles group on Mondays at noon have been doing. So it's called Finding Perspective in God's Light by Gretchen Fleming. The scripture is, for with you is the fountain of life, and your light do we see light. Psalm 36, 9. Gretchen says, I remember sitting on my yellow couch that morning, already worn out by the day, <laughs> and it was morning. So I felt like I was on a roller coaster taking twists and turns and drops out of nowhere. Only it wasn't the physical roller coaster that thrills. It was the emotional roller coaster. I know y'all have felt that before. It's that highs and lows and <sighs> you just need to take a deep breath, sit down relax. Let's see what she says. It seemed like I found myself in the state of mind increasingly more often and I was just getting exhausted by it all. Why is life so dramatic? There had to be a better way and that's when my mind automatically turned to the Bible and I'm so glad to hear that with her but how many times do we not turn to the Bible and our, our, our wills are spinning and, and we get out of control with our thoughts and the next thing you know it, where you have so much anxiety, we want to go back to bed sometimes. But she turned to the Bible, and that's a good reminder for us. One of the most life-changing lessons God has taught me has to do with perspective. Y'all, that's the word of the day, perspective. She says it a lot in here. Specifically, his perspective being more advantageous than mine. As I have lived life and its ups and downs, and as my faith has matured, I have learned to quickly transition from what I am thinking about a particular situation situation to asking what God has to think about it. Man, that's so good. And I think even with this TikTok that I made is perspective. Perspective is everything. And we do want to be careful with our words. We don't, you know, we don't have to be because a few people said, you don't have to be shy, you know, because I, I did. I was like, reluctant, but I wanted to look, uh, that like I was, um, 
careful with my words. I, I didn't want anybody to feel condemned by what I said or convicted by what I said. It's what the, the Lord has to uh, offer. Specifically, okay, as I had lived life with its ups and downs, as my faith had matured, I had quickly learned a transition from what I'm thinking about a particular situation to ask God what he thinks about it. I have found his perspective is really all that matters because of numerous reasons. And here she lists some reasons. God is all-knowing, therefore he has the wisest truest perspective that I can trust. My perspective can be skewed because of ignorance, emotions, and pride. Two, God is all loving, so I can trust that his perspective will always have my best interest at heart. He loves me like no other, and he loves others just as much. It's a perfect love which drives out all fear as I rest in the fact that his perspective will be fair to all in any given situation. So I, it's not our perspective, it's his perspective. God, three, God is all-powerful, bringing everything and everyone under his authority and submission. He is fully able to control and navigate me and my circumstances. He's all-knowing, all-loving, and all-powerful. As I sat on my couch this morning with my inadequate perspective and need of the Lord's, I understood full well that he is the fountain of life, and in him I see things as I should. This change in perspective happens as I begin to consider what the word has to say about my circumstance, because it is in the Bible that I learn what his perspective is on any given situation. So instead of guessing, we got to get in the word, yeah? we got to get our, I always say, get our nose deep down into the Bible. For instance, that particular day, I was drained from the emotional highs and lows of family life. When you have family members going through peaks and valleys of their own, it's hard not to get caught up in their drama. Whether they're experiencing the greatest of achievements or the worst of defeats, it can all get to be too much. I liken it to getting caught up in a dust storm. It is way too easy to get carried away. And we do, we take, on each, we take on each other's problems a lot of times when we have no control over it. And I, I have practiced boundaries. We have to practice boundaries because if we get in that emotional roller coaster of what someone else is going through, that's not healthy. It's not helping us. It's not going to change anything, right? So we have to draw boundaries and we have to stay neutral and we can be a positive light in their life and we can pray for them, but we can't carry that burden as well. The tension exists as I yearn for steadiness and consistency. Mind you, I am not saying flat emotions, just steady emotions. And that is what brought Jesus to my mind that day. While I experienced the ebb and flow of two family members' emotions connected to their ongoing goals and struggles in life, I realized there has to be a better way of handling this thing called life. My mind remembered Jesus in Luke 4:14 4, through 30. Jesus went from being praised in one place and being driven out in another. The highs of people thinking he was wonderful and the lows of people trying to throw him off a cliff were extreme to say the least. Yet Jesus handled it with such peace and perspective. He did not get caught up in the fame nor the infamy, the bad reputation. It simply said he went on his own way. And how many times do we feel persecuted, judged when that kind of, I will tell you when, and I'm not going to say if, but when I get negative comments on that post on TikTok, I, it's going to crush my spirit a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit of persecution. But the Bible says you're going to be persecuted. You know, when you live for the Lord, you're going to be persecuted. And I like to tell a story about um, when I published my first book on Amazon that I knew the moment I published it that there was going to be negative uh, feedback. And I just, my heart hurt at the thought of it, but I prepared myself. I was like, you know what? As a Christian, I'm going to be persecuted. That's just the way it is. And it came. And it came because of my faith. Because I did not lay it out there on the title of the book. This is a faith-based book. Even though there was pictures of the inside, I had two negative reviews of people who bought it. And they were not happy. They were not happy at all. And how I responded 
was going to be a reflection on Christianity, right? And so I was really careful the way I responded. And I said, I am so sorry that I did not make you aware of that. And I would love to offer you a refund. And, you know, in a loving, loving way. Because if I got a book that was about atheism, I would not be happy either, right? And if I respond in a loving way, it might make them think, well, maybe Christians aren't so bad after all. But I still think they got they did not get it by accident. Because in the back, it invites them to, to um, it's an invitation to love the Lord. So I don't think it was gotten by accident, but I did learn a lesson of you're going to be persecuted. Just stop. So God had stayed firmly rooted in his God-given person. Jesus had stayed firmly rooted in his God-given purpose, preaching the good news, knowing that his praise and persecution were under God's control and not for him to be overly concerned with. He entrusted it to whom it was meant and then he rested in the knowledge. Jesus abided in the all-suffering of his Father, which enabled him to maintain composure. Let me read that again. Jesus abided in the all-sufficiency of his Father, which enabled him to maintain composure. Pondering how Jesus handled his life so calmly helped me see how I could as well. This lesson from Jesus reminds me of how, why I look to him for perspective. So he, so Jesus could have been like, you know, these people love me. These people hate me. You know, how did he react? He didn't change anything. He just was, he just, uh, he was just him. He just existed for his, um, for his purpose. And that is our calling on earth is to love everyone, whether they like what we say or not, we want to be loving. So Psalm 36, 9 says, for with you is the fountain of life and your light. Do we see light? And, um, that goes right along with the word perspective. I learned the better way of responding to life by looking to the fountain of all life and learning from his example. It was in his light that I saw my light, a better perspective who better to glean perspective from than him. Having lived long enough and hard enough to understand my own deficiencies, I am assured that God absolutely has a perspective I need and can't live without. So, guess what we're going to draw today? We're going to draw a fountain that says perspective on it. Okay, let's read some comments. The only ones I can see. My word is trust, Proverbs 3, 5. Amen. We are not responsible for other people's emotions. Absolutely not. And man, we can carry that burden a lot of times. Um, when someone's upset, it bothers me. I want everybody happy. <laughs> I want everybody happy. I want everybody to get along, you know, and that's just not the world we live in, right? So I have to draw that boundary. There is a really good book called Boundaries. If you have struggles with that, get it. And the good news is God's word does not return void. Thank you, Vicki. Awesome. Happy New Year, Barbara. Are y'all ready to get started? Do you have your pen and paper? Lisa says, absolutely. I just cannot judge a lot of things other Christians do. I try to remember. WWJD, what would Jesus do? The name of the book, thank you, Pat, for asking. The name of the book is called Let Your Light Shine. It, it, we've been working through this for a long time because we're only doing one day at a time and it's a 31 day soul deep devotional. So it's really meant to do every day, but we've just been doing once a week. Welcome. Welcome. If y'all are new. Okay. So I've been sketching my little fountain here. Um, if you're new, what we're going to do is I have a journal and I recommend you getting a journal as well. And what we're going to do with it is, let me get my, I've got my computer set up so y'all can see most of the screen. Oops. Okay. Just turning in sounds like I'm going to have to catch the replay. Yes, Renee, you can, but if you have a pen and paper, go ahead and join us for this part. Absolutely. You'll draw tonight because you're heavy sick. Lisa, gotcha. Renna, connect is your word. I love it. I love it. Let me show you. Here's what I did yesterday while I was reflecting on what my word was going to be because I, I was struggling 
with it because I didn't want to give up shine. Not that I have to give up shine, but I didn't want it. I wanted shine to be my word forever and it will be very special to me, but that was my word last year. This year, because of the TikTok video that I told you about earlier, I just, I felt the Lord saying, rise up, be bold in your faith, rise up and shine. So not only am I going to rise up, I'm going to shine while I do it, right? You're reading the book Boundaries right now. It's been eye-opening to read the biblical view on boundaries. Amen, Mandy, for sure. Praying for your husband for COVID. Oh, the name of the book I wrote. If, you, if you're wondering about the name of the book I wrote, it is the first, well, this is the second one. I don't know if I have a copy of the first. This is the, um, okay, so this is the first one. So C has nothing to do with faith, faith based on it. <laughs> but in the back, and I think I had some pictures on there, but, you know, imagine being someone who is not a believer and all these scriptures are in the back and you're like, wait a minute. He said, I bought this for my daughter and we're not, well, I'm talking like, it sounded, this is what I heard him say. I bought this for my daughter and I can't believe blah, blah, blah. He might not have said it that way. You know how we interpret things when we read it, right? <laughs> but it is filled with that. And then at the very back, it says, if I pray for each person that goes through this workbook, my prayer is they will use their hand lettering skills to bless others. Thank you, God, for your love, peace, and understanding. If there's anyone who hasn't accepted you as their Lord and Savior, I pray they will seek and find you, John 3, 16. So, I mean, it's here. It's here. Rise up. That's right. And then hand letter doodle and pray. <laughs> As you can see, pray is clearly on here because I was like, oh, I realized that Facebook had a thing. It said I could put my, oh, thank you for loving my book. Um, It says that I can add links, but I don't know where they go. I'm going to try this real quick, okay? I, I've never done this before. Let me see if it'll, hmm. okay. Well, anyway, it gave me a place to add a link, but I'm not sure where, where it added. I don't know where it goes. Hi, Candy. Both of my books are wonderful. Ah, I love y'all. Y'all have to say it, right? Because you love me. <laughs> Focus is your word of the year. Focus more on the Lord, the Bible, and God's will for my life. Oh, love it. And here's the thing I want to say, y'all. When you pick your word of the year, make sure it means something. Don't just pick a word because it's pretty word or it's, and that's what I did in the beginning. And that's okay too. But last year was the first year I really got it. I really like absorbed it. I really, um, I really caught on to this is what it's about. I put my scripture up and of course I sit at this desk all the time. And so it's easy for me to read my scripture. But if you um, have a spot that you go to, if you have a computer that you sit at, or maybe you could tape it to your laptop or whatever, to your forehead, whatever, tattoo it. <laughs> but repeat that scripture. Um, and that's what, this is my scripture. And so I was playing around yesterday and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my beautiful journal. So if you're new, these are, uh, these are different ones that we've done throughout the year. I don't even know how many there are. There's a lot. Aren't those fun? And so if you join us, you can keep adding to yours as well. Let your light shine. Yes, if you are interested in the Let Your Light Shine or anything I show you in the description of this video, so you can go back afterwards and click on where it says Devos and Doodles, and it gives a list of everything I use, or 99% of everything I use. <laughs> Henry Cloud wrote Boundaries, and he has a Facebook page, a daily call-in. He also offers videos. Awesome. Thanks, Robin, for that information. Okay, so... So you, uh, what are they called? The people who've been around for a long time? The OGs? I don't think it's OG. It's something. Anyway. What is it called? Uh, well, anyway. Y'all know. I'm repeating myself for the new people, but y'all know who've been around for a while. I'm going to use a friction pen to start off with, and it is an erasable pen. And that way y'all can see it because it's black, because pencil is hard to see. And you also can erase. So it's got the best of both worlds, right? We're going to start off by drawing a fountain. I'm going to draw the fountain, and I'm going to sketch out the scripture. 
And then I'm going to leave those of you who aren't in my tribe to go ahead and finish it yourself, to watercolor, paint, whatever you want to do. But I'll be going into my private group and we'll be doing the rest of the artwork just to just to show you. Hi, Janet. Embrace. Ah, what a good word. Liz, I love this song from the Messiah that has reverse in it. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. Old timers. Yeah, we could do OTs. <laughs> OG. Old old gals. You OGs. <laughs> I like that. No, y'all don't want to be called old. I don't want to be called old. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Seasoned? I don't know. Okay, let's draw a fountain together. i look for my sketch because, you know, sometimes I <laughs> forget. I sometimes have to look in my own book to get ideas. I'm not even kidding. Okay. Here we go. We're going to start with the fountain. I'm going to start on the left-hand side, and we are going to draw. I'm trying to think of how big to draw it. We're going to draw a rectangle. Now, just so you know, it's okay. Mine are not straight. All my lines are not straight. They are hand-drawn, so I, I try to make y'all feel better, too, because <laughs> if the teacher's isn't straight, then it's really okay for y'all to be straight. Okay, Donna has two words. One is organized and the other is push. Push through fatigue to get things done. I'll have to push myself to get organized. Amen, sister. Maybe it should just be, okay, push. Yeah, yeah, I got, I like it. Okay, now we're going to make a little base. Hang on. Okay, now we're going to make a base. So that was the base. This is one of the tiers. Hi, Gileen. You had to go back to work. What? <laughs> Declutter is a good word, too. Seasoned women. I like that. SW. Okay, now we're going to make a U, the letter U, that's kind of, you know, like this. Don't you love my sketching? <laughs> and then we're going to... We're going to make a little curve right here with a little lip. Y'all see that? It's probably kind of hard to see. And then we're going to go across the top and make those lines. And then we're going to get that lip and go across. I'm not loving the straight lines down here, but we'll go with it for now. Okay, and then we're going to do another tier going to be more arched in. That would probably look better like that too. My pleasure for sharing. Thanks for watching. I know. I'm so glad that everybody shares their, it gives us uh, ideas. Ideas for our own and reminders. And here's a smaller bowl. And then we're going to do a lip on that as well. Probably should have gone down with this and not done it so high up because, you know, you want your water to spew out really good. But that's why we do it in pencil first. Correct? Okay, now we're going to do the water. So we're going to just make an arch like so. And another one. And another one. Another one, then we'll do one here as well. I guess that's going. Maybe I shouldn't do one there because it's going off into the <laughs> ground. <laughs> you don't have to do that one. You might not want to do that one. I was thinking of had three tiers, but so there's our fountain. Now let's get to our words for you. Make sure I have the words right. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to start with fountain. And I'm going to make it big. Fountain of life. Because that's what I really want to focus on. And I'm going to do a little flourishing today. Which means make some fancy letters basically. The journal I am using. 
I don't always recommend it because it's not my favorite paper, but I happened to get it at Magnolia and it's called Sugar Boo and Company. But here, hey, I just I just found some journals I'm really excited about. They're the same shape and they're meant to be for this kind of thing. And I have one on order so I can look at it and see if it's something I want to recommend to y'all. So, okay, ready? Fountain. And I'm leaving some space here because I think I'm going to put life right in here. I'm trying to remember what I was thinking. And then my T will make it a little bit dramatic as we cross it. And then right here, I actually wanted to swirl this around and down like that. And then we'll cross our F. And then I'm going to fit life in here. And of will come later. Uh-oh. No, you can't run out of ink. I've noticed all of mine are running out of ink. I've had them for, wait, for a couple of years. There we go. Just scribble with it. And I'm making this fit right here. So all my letters are going to be a different size. And then I'll decide where I want to put of. I can do it here or here. Sometimes I like to write stuff sideways. Because, you know, I'm not normal. <laughs> That's what I love to see your work. Because when y'all post your work, I'm like, oh my gosh, look how creative. Oh my gosh, look how they did that. So it's just really fun. Really fun to me to see your work. All right. Now we're going to fill in. For with you is the fountain of life. So we're just going to come up here. I'm actually going to try to fit it, fit it all in. I wish I would have gone up higher, but that's just, you know, it's, it's just paper and pencil, pencil. It's not a big thing. It's not a big thing. If you mess up, this is about the process, the process of studying God's word, not about how beautiful or how messed up it is, right? Because, you know, we are messed up people. We are not perfect. Okay, and then I'm going to put you, and I'm just like randomly writing words wherever I want them. The with you is the, and I really love, and this is hard to do, is fitting words together to make them look like one, um, like if you if you look at like Pinterest when you search on there and you see when people have done their words in a really pretty art form, a lot of times it's it takes hours to do and people don't realize that because to fit the words together is not easy. Life is light. Fountain of life. See, I write lots of thank you. It's y'all's job to make sure I do it right. That's why I have my little eraser here. Let's see if I can just erase part of it. Oh, I'm not using just the eraser of the pen because it doesn't like this paper. And it, like, when I use the eraser on it, it is not nice. Not nice at all. It, like, balls up. and. Okay, so the great thing is I can still see my marks. Okay. Thank you for doing your job, life. And the cool part is just what I did. I can erase. So there's life. And then when I go back over it in pen, I won't have to worry about all those extras. For with you is the fountain of life, semicolon. In your light do we see light. Is that how it goes? In your light do we see light. So we can decide, do I want to fill in right in here or do how do I want to do it? And I am going to fill in right in here. So in your light, do we see light? Okay, so I'm going to do light right here. Ah. 
<laughs> Y'all are so good telling me. Thank you. Y'all have my back. For with you is the fountain of life in your light. And remember, we repeat this over and over again, and that's how we learn the scripture. So I'm just fitting the words in. And if I wouldn't have done this ahead of time a little bit, I couldn't have done it in front of y'all because it does take too much time to share to my groups. Hang on, it's just now allowing me to share to my groups. I don't understand that, but we're going to do it. Be the light. Tan with a doodle and pray. Shine bright. Okay. I never had a word. Not sure how to get one. I usually just stumble along. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Um, at first I was like, what do you mean a word? What do you, what do you mean a word of the year? Um, you know, God will give you a word. He will give you a word. And if you don't have a word and you like the word perspective, y'all, that's a good one. Like I said, I might have had to do that one. But give it meaning. Don't just pick a word because it's pretty. Right? Don't pick a word because every sign you see when you walk into Hobby Lobby says faith. Right? Unless that's something you're really, really focused on and you know like how you're going to use that word. I think you need to live out that word for the year. In your light do we see light. And I'm going to emphasize see because, um, well, I like the word. I just put we as in wee wee. Ah, I'm going to make C big because it fits here good, but also I have light and I want to balance that out and not make it too big. If that makes sense. And look how I've mixed up my fonts. Like I did, you know, my little scripture cards like these. These little scripture cards, these are free on my website, by the way. See how all, how I fit things together? They take about an hour a piece now that I have been doing it. Like now that I have been, um, because they're all designed differently. I, I got smart, well, I got smarter later and I started, I don't always, but there's some of my first ones. See how fitting the words in, and they're not even that great, uh, but fitting the words in, and changing up the fonts is everything. And if y'all are interested in these, these are to color. And they're in my Etsy shop. But the whole point in that was to show you that you can spend a lot of time trying to do this. But it is so fun. I love it. Okay. So then we can uh, look at where we feel like what, what what is needed. Where do I put what? So don't forget to always put your reference, your scripture reference. And this one is Psalm 36.9. And there we have it. There we have it. Okay, so I'm going to let y'all know about the journal that I have coming. Because this was expensive. The one I have coming is probably a third of the price of this one. This is $44. It's recycled paper. It's not... Mm, the one I have coming, you can watch it. It just works better for what we're doing. So if you'll hang on till next week, I'll be able to tell you what that journal is. It's shaped the exact same way. Love the shape of this. Uh, anyway, so that is our lesson for this week. I still want to keep challenging you to pick your word of the year. Um, and um, be looking and listening, you know, for what the Lord has for you. Because it will come if you're open to it and you're paying attention. Sometimes we have to be still, right? Be still to do that. So y'all have a blessed day. And if you're in my hand lettering tribe, go ahead and meet me over there. Um, right now I'm heading that way. And then everybody else, make sure that you're a part of my, um, hand letter doodle and pray group. It's a free group. And then you will be able to post your work in there and see other people's work. It's really fun. I don't do much teaching. I don't do any teaching in there. Sometimes I'll pop in, but not very often. It's more of a community for you guys. 
when you're writing your verse, do you use the version in the study or write your own? That's a good question, Lacey. This one I actually used what was in the book, but sometimes I, if I, you know, I could have looked at different versions, definitely. Um, so whatever version, I'm designing some scripture cards right now for someone and she's using the net N E T version. And I, I don't hate to say it, but I didn't even hear that before. I've never heard of it. Love you too, Kelly. And everybody on here, y'all are so wonderful and supportive. Um, God bless you too. Uh, the hand lettering, can we still join the hand lettering? I know you didn't mean to put gift. Are you talking about the happy mail or the tribes? Aren't you in my tribes, Christy? If you're asking about joining my hand lettering tribes, um, the link is at the top of this description. And um, in fact, I can put it in here right now, but it doesn't open to new members until the 15th of this month. And so you can get on the wait list right now, but you can't, the doors aren't open until, oh, it may not let me do this. The doors don't open until the 18th. It's not letting me. Why not? It does not very nice. I was going to post the link, but it's not going to let me. So, oh wait, hang on. <gasps> Feature. I don't know where it went, but I have the link. Christy, talk to, um, go talk to, uh, Dara and that she is the email that you go to is a very, very top of our group. And it has the email up there. It's support at craft of, craft of .com. But if you decide you want to just, if you want to join both, it's just an extra, you save $18. Thank you. The link is there. Where is the link? I want to know where it went. Do, is it like at the top of this? Because it doesn't show me. I'm so excited that the link is there. But I like to know what it looks like. Okay. I'll see y'all in my other group. And um, love y'all all. And I will see you hopefully before Monday. But if not, I'll see you next Monday. Bye.